Greetings in the name of Yahweh, the only name given among men whereby we must be saved. And we do appreciate each and every one of you who has taken your time tuning this program. And we believe it will be a real blessing to you at the end of the broadcast. We will give you an address, telephone number, how to receive information. We have a CD, or matter of fact, several CDs, but one of them is called The Father's Name, and the other one is called True Oneness. And when I talk about true oneness, I'm talking about true oneness. I'm talking about what the early assembly taught 2,000 years ago. I'm not talking about this stuff we have today. Do I understand that the assembly has went through a lot of changes since the time of the apostles. And we can understand that by reading the New Testament. And we can understand that by history. How history the history of things when you really start studying that history will show you that there was a lot of things taking place. And in most of people that are oneness and when I say oneness I'm talking about They use Acts 2.38, baptizing, according to what the King James does, in Jesus' name. That is what's taught today as oneness. And I'm very familiar with it. I'm very, very familiar with it because it's all I've ever, uh, ever known all my life. And still believe in oneness. I thought I had a revelation on Acts 2.38 until I seen the truth. I believed it took a name. But then when I really seen what it was talking about, it was talking about not just a name, but it was talking about the name. There was only one plan of salvation that was ever given from the beginning when the Holy Spirit was poured out. And you'll hear us talk about on the day of Pentecost, of course some will say that Pentecost could have been between 30 A.D. to 33 A.D. I'm not arguing that point. But we know that there was a Pentecost. And what really the assembly today that's being taught Pentecost doesn't really understand that when you look up Pentecost and understand what Pentecost is, Pentecost if you study it, Pentecost was like a feast day. And it was 50 days, or really it went 49 days. It's a Hebrew word that's called Shavuot. Or some may say Hashavuot. The word Ha in Hebrew means the, the Pentecost. 
on the day of Pentecost nearly 2,000 years ago when the Holy Spirit or what is known in Hebrew as the Ruach HaKodesh known as the Holy Spirit King James translates it Holy Ghost now when you get into names is different you can go from Ruach into Spirit or King James will say Holy Ghost these are not names but when you start dealing with names names don't change and you're being taught this kind of stuff but if you do any studying and you go back to 325 AD well first of all 325 AD according to the history of a lot of oneness teachings if the name of Jesus is less than 250 years old was not even in the original 1611 King James Bible then we know that Apostle Peter it's impossible for any prophet the prophets had to give witness to something according to the book of Acts 1043 Apostle Peter who had the keys to the kingdom give witness of this he said to him gave all the prophets witness the prophets it was talking about was in what we know today as the Old Testament. But nearly 2,000 years ago, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, Peter having the keys to the kingdom, the true Messiah resurrected at the time of what would be known as the Omer offering to be offered up. This is why he had to do it at a certain time and from that day, that first day or that first what we look at on a calendar as being Sunday. That first day, that first day of the week when we look at a calendar, Sunday even shows on our calendars today has been the first day of the week. That day, from to the time that the Holy Spirit was poured out, the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out was the 50th day. The word Pentecost really, in Hebrew, it's known as Shavuot or either Hashavuot, meaning Pentecost or the Pentecost. And a lot of times it could be presented as being Shivat Hashavuot, meaning the seven weeks. Actually, that's really what the word Shavuot is, meaning weeks. It took seven weeks. They were 49 days, being seven days of each week then the next day would be the 50th day. My point is, when Shavuot, if you go study Pentecost, you got to go back to the Scripture is what you have to do. You have to go back to your Bible. And you can find all this scattered between the book of Exodus, the book of Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. You can find what would be known as the Jewish feast days or Israel's feast days. These feast days, every one of these feast days was for the purpose of the name of Yahweh. Now, I've been 
telling you about books that I've been reading of oneness teachings. And trying to prove a oneness message using the name of Jesus, you can't do it. This is pretty much why Trinitarian doctrine has gotten started. I said this is pretty much why Trinitarian doctrine got started. Now, before I go any farther in this Pentecost, I want to, we all understand that on the day of Pentecost, nearly 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit was poured out according to the book of Acts to Acts 2 and 1, we find that it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now I'm reading from a red letter edition King James Bible. And we understand that the word Pentecost is the word Shavuot, either Hashavuot, meaning the weeks are weeks. But this Pentecost, if, if you are a believer, I don't care if you're baptized in Jesus' name, Acts 2.38, if you're Trinity and you're baptized titles Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or as the King James says, Holy Ghost. When you read the book of Acts, You've got to understand that nearly 2,000 years ago, this was a feast day. But if you're oneness, you can believe and have to only believe that there is only one name. You can't be true oneness and believe in many names. You can be Trinity and believe in many names because Trinity doctrine believes Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And some evidently believe that the word Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are names. And they baptize in titles that way, of titles of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But oneness Pentecostal oneness, apostolic Pentecostal oneness. I don't care what denomination you belong to in oneness. And there's a bunch of different denominations in oneness. You can only believe that there's one name. You can't do like Trinity does have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and accept names, but you can't do it. Because it does not work in real, true oneness. Now, I'm going to make a point here because of I've been reading some literature that I've had for years on oneness, apostolic teachings and their good teachings very good teachings but you have to watch certain teachings though and got a lot of good points in these teachings but what they really don't understand that the name that they're using was a name that's not even in the original 1611 King James Bible, which is the name of Jesus. And it's not only that, but if you're oneness and you're listening to this program, you're not going to see us, and if you, you have the right to call me. If I get off any you have the right to call me. Now, 
You can study this for yourself if you're oneness. The reason why I'm putting so much emphasis on the oneness doctrine is because the oneness doctrine can only have one name. I was like most of you that are oneness, regardless of what denomination you are, if you're the apostolic, ever, ever what you are, ever what denomination you belong to. I read a lot of, and got a lot of literature from what they would call the United Pentecostal uh, Church International, known as the UPCI. They have a lot of oneness literature out. It is really oneness to an extent. And it's a lot of good, 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 good teachings in it. But the name, when you start saying that the name of Jesus replaced or was put alongside the name of the creator of heaven and earth that you find in scripture. In other words, if you go and take your King James Bible and go back to where it was translated from, from the Old Testament, go to it. I have Hebrew Bibles here That everywhere, Yo King James will use the word L O R D capital letters, G O D capital letters, and the word Jehovah seven times. It literally has what is known in Hebrew as the letters, the four letters, known as the Yud Hey Wav Hey. Some people may say Yahweh. But the name of Yahweh here. If you, people say, and then people say, well, you'll have one saying, one name, one way to pronounce it. If you go, it can really only be truthfully, honestly pronounced one way in Hebrew. A lot of times people are taught stuff. People's heard of the word hallelujah. The word hallelujah is not a name, but the word yah is, part, is his name. It's known as the short form of the name of Yahweh. In English, it is spelled Y-A-H. In Hebrew, it's known as the yud Hey. And then people are taught to throw the name, that the name has been replaced with the name of Jesus, as some of these Pentecostal books are saying, or has been put alongside. No, it's not. It has not been replaced by the name of Jesus, and it has not been put alongside of no name, because there's only one name given. The name of Jesus is just not old enough. This has nothing to do with your experience, though. Yahweh Almighty understands what man's gone through over the years. He understands the church age. He understands what has happened. You can get caught up in a denomination, in your denomination. You're not going no farther than your denomination. If you're Trinity, you're not going no farther than that Trinitarian doctrine will let you go. That organization. If you're oneness, you're not going no farther than what that oneness organization will let you go. But if you go back to the word of Yahweh, this is why this one true oneness doctrine will, will correct the, the Trinitarian doctrine real easy. And the reason why is because if you can understand the true name from Genesis to Malachi that 
all the prophets gave witness to it. Then you can understand that you'll only find one true God, but people are being taught today that God has many names. Your King James Bible doesn't teach this stuff. And we're going to cover all of this in the weeks to come because we're doing a series known as Acts 2.38 in the early assembly. So whether your oneness or trinity, Pentecost was Pentecost and it was a feast day. It was a feast day. Now, I want to point out something here because especially to the oneness, especially to the oneness, after what I have read about this one particular book that I've read, and once you begin to study this and search this out, hunt for yourself, I read a book, it was called In the Name of of Jesus it says I said this is what it, it's talking about it says in the name of Jesus and this name is the only name they're saying that was given for the plan of salvation there's no other name given I said there's no other name name given is what they're saying they're laying it out as the name of Jesus is the name that's given and no other name given they're giving it out as if the name of Jesus the prophets gave witness to it they're giving it out that in the as in the New Testament the name of Jesus was there for the apostles to use this is how it's really being stressed and it's and it's not true it is totally not true. There's not a oneness person that's listening to any broadcast on any radio station that we're on. And we, by the grace and mercy of the creator of heaven and earth, we are reaching many, many, many states on the stations that we are on scattered throughout the United States. Oneness people that calls us tries to defend, but we have turned around. If you can get them to study, once you get them to studying and they, they're open to truth, they'll open up. We have baptized, we, we baptized several Oneness Pentecostal UPC people, United Pentecostal Internationals, just a while back. I have them to call. And, you know, truthfully, when they see this, they really begin to see how Trinitarian doctrine is so tied into the oneness teaching today because of all these names. See, the thing is, is what you need to do, you need to study because you ain't only dealing with the name of Jesus. You're going back to the 1611 that uses I-E-S-U-S, Jesus. Then it goes back to the Greek I-E-S-O-U-S, Jesus. Then you got people that takes it back to Yeshua. Then you got them take it back to Yehoshua or Joshua. And we're going to be dealing with all of this. It's not just the name of Jesus you're dealing with. When you backtrack history, you having to go through at least five names, if not more, because even in Spanish they call them Jesus. So it'd make it six names. And in the, in even more, you're not just dealing with the name of Jesus. But the Bible says and shows that there's no plan of salvation only in one name is all the Bible teaches. All these different names is not working. Now, 
Does this have anything to do with your experience? No. But your experience and the Holy Spirit that you have ought to guide you in all truth. Because there's only one plan of salvation. Now, I'm not talking about people that's coming that, that's dead and gone. I'm talking about a message in this end time is coming back. Y'all was not going to have him assembly less than what he started out with. Preaching less than what the early assembly taught. And you have to watch this kind of stuff because when you read books and they and you see stress put on Jesus, brother, they're they're instilling to you as if it was at the time of the apostles because you would not believe the oneness Pentecostal that will say, well, I believe Peter uh, actually baptized in Jesus' name. Then when you hear this kind of stuff, you know people ain't studying. People are not studying. They're running on what they've been told through these books is what they've been doing. That's all. Preachers, you listen to this. We're challenging your oneness doctrine in Jesus' name that it's not true. That it never was in the beginning true. This, we're not challenging your experience. When we come into this, we set our children down and we told them that we still serve the same one we always served. But we just found out his true name. And we went from there. But the truth will make you free. I said the truth will make you free. And again, it looks like that our time has just about come and gone again so quick. And I didn't get in on what I'm wanting to get into because I'm what I'm wanting to, and I'm going to pick this back up next week. Did the name of the Father disappear when the Son was born? Because this is what your Pentecostal teachings are being, you're being taught. I said, you're being taught this? Because you, if the Father and Son is two different names, you got a problem. But we'll pick this back up next week, y'all was grace and mercy. We have a CD that's called The Father's Name. We have literature that we send out along with it. You can write us, Brother Jerry, 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014 USA. That's Brother Jerry, 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014 USA. Telephone number is 770-784-0703. That's 770-784-0703. Now, we have a website to go over to it. The best way to tell you is this. you got to spell Yahweh, Y-A-H-W-A-H. you got to spell it, Y-A-H-W-A-H. Then, hyphen, well, you can put a hyphen or either just put ministries. Once you do, usually it will take you over and it will, I don't know why, but it pops up and it'll say, it'll have my name on there, Jerry Kirk. You go over to it. And you will, you can listen to these videos, watch these videos, and listen to them on the teaching of Acts 2.38 in the early assembly. We're showing the Hebrew scriptures on a screen from where the actual scriptures are that shows the plan of salvation that was used for the early assembly by what the prophets gave witness to. The, tele the address is, again, Brother Jerry, 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014. Telephone number is 770-784-0703. The website, again, is Yahweh Ministries, Y-A-H-W-A-H, then put Ministries, and then usually to say Yahweh Ministries, then say Jerry Kirk. Click over there to that, and it'll take you over to the website, and it'll be a real, 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 real blessing to you. We come on at the same time every week. The time that you're listening to us is the time we come on every week. So till the next broadcast at this same time that you're listening to us, we appreciate you. 
We love you. Shalom.